darkness, and then bang, giving birth to an endless expanding existence of time, space, and matter. Every day, new discoveries are unlocking the mysterious, the mind-blowing, the deadly secrets of a place we call the universe. They appear out of nowhere and threaten our very existence. From rocks crashing through homes to Mount Everest-sized boulders triggering mass annihilation, no one is safe from their wrath. And some of these intruders are not extraterrestrial. They're actually man-made cosmic junk. Take cover as we investigate meteorites and space debris, the deadly stuff that falls from space. Eleven thirty-nine p.m., October sixth, two thousand eight. The Catalina Sky Observatory in Arizona notices something it hadn't seen before. An asteroid the size of an SUV is screaming down towards Earth at over 27,000 miles per hour. An alarm sounds throughout the international scientific community. Is this asteroid on a collision course with Earth? This object was special because it was probably going to impact the Earth. And over the course of the next 21 hours, 500 observations were made of the object to try to exactly calculate its orbit. At NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Steve Chesley gets the urgent wake-up call. Everyone wants to know when and where this rock will touch ground. They sent me the data. I rushed into the office rather excitedly and uh, spent the next couple of hours trying to get my arms around the problem by running the numbers. And I reached the conclusion it was a 100% chance of impact. Chesley calculates the collision will occur in less than 13 hours, approximately 5.45 a.m. Eastern African time. Its target, the Nubian Desert in northern Sudan. We hadn't really expected or anticipated the discovery of an asteroid that was going to hit the Earth uh, before impact. Um, with time to react and time to predict the location of the impact is uh, very extraordinary. Never, never seen it before. It was countdown to impact. With no time to stop this runaway space rock, emails went out to alert those on the ground and in the air. 5.45 a.m. The moment has arrived. A commercial pilot is flying over Sudan. He witnesses a fireball smack right into the Earth's atmosphere with the energy of about a thousand tons of TNT. As it entered the atmosphere, it started to burn and brighten. At some point, the stresses on the body became so fantastic from the atmospheric pressure that it just exploded. That explosion would have sounded like a sonic boom. On the ground, 23 miles below, Sudanese people returning for morning prayers hear the frightening sonic roar. Witnesses see a brilliant fireball, followed by mysterious flashes of light streak across the sky. Scientists had hoped the asteroid wasn't heavy enough to completely penetrate through the Earth's atmosphere and wreak havoc on the ground. Satellites track the fiery explosion, but there is little indication that any fragments survive. So there is a possibility that people could be frightened by such an event, but uh, the risk of injury is really very low from something so small. And Steve was correct. There were no reports of injuries or damage due to falling debris in the remote region. Planet Earth was spared from a potential disaster partly because the region was so remote and the impactor was small. But the story doesn't end here. December 2008. Astronomer Peter Yeniskis organizes a search and recovery team from the University of Khartoum in Sudan. He's determined to find the unlikely. Meteorites, 
the surviving fragments of the asteroid named 2008 TC3. We had a busload with students, so all we could to go and search. We drove 29 kilometers into the desert to go to the area close to the explosion to look for the smaller pieces that might have survived. The meteorite hunter's only guide is a map of the Nubian desert with the projected approach path of the asteroid. They basically used my trajectory and the ground track that I had laid out on the desert floor as a guide for their search. Lined up everybody about 20, 30 uh, yards apart and then started walking down the desert in line, searching for things that were black. But spotting small charcoal-like stones on the rocky desert surface is akin to finding a needle in a haystack. As the sun begins to set on the first day, the team is about to walk away empty-handed when a student suddenly comes forward with a suspicious rock. A student called Mohammed Alamin had this little rock in his hand that was clearly a meteorite. It had a beautiful black fusion crust around it, and it was undoubtedly a meteorite. And then everybody started being excited and shouting and singing and uh, waving their hands. 280 meteorite samples were eventually recovered, equaling 11 pounds, which for planetary scientists was like hitting pay dirt. This was one of the meteorites that was recovered. Uh, not much bigger than this. We think that a lot of these meteorites when they came out of the explosion were well, tumbling very rapidly and that resulted in uh, breaking of the meteorites when it was still up in the air. 2008 TC3 is the first asteroid ever observed in space, which was later found on the ground. Scientists are calling it the first asteroid sample return mission. It's the first time that we've actually detected something in space, figured out that it was going to hit the Earth, figured out where it was going to hit the Earth, and we actually saw it hit the Earth. We've even recovered pieces of it. That's remarkable. This whole experience was really fantastic for us. This was an excellent test for what we're really preparing for, which is the possibility of having to deal with a larger impactor sometime in the future. Planet Earth may not be so lucky the next time. Scientists now suspect 2008 TC3 came from a piece of a much larger rock from the asteroid belt, a region between Jupiter and Mars where asteroids and comets take up residence. In this crowded galactic neighborhood, these fossil relics from the formation of the solar system occasionally collide with each other and explode into smaller pieces. It's these fragments that can migrate towards Earth. A bullet can provide a pretty good stand-in for one asteroid striking another in terms of its impact speed. Asteroids in the main asteroid belt will run into each other at speeds of over 11,000 miles per hour. Now, a bullet traveling out of a rifle can be a good analogy for that because they will leave a rifle barrel at speeds, you know, maybe a fifth that. So it doesn't just fragment. It literally blows itself to pieces. Okay, we'll head down range and actually uh, set up our, our little artificial asteroids at a safe enough distance to shoot. Since real asteroids are hard to come by, we're going to uh, use a couple of stand-ins today. These bullet impacts are comparable to the collisions in the asteroid belt. Let's see what our results are here. This is actually rather typical of the results of an asteroid impact, where you tend to have a few large pieces of debris, several medium-sized pieces, but nature is very good at making lots and lots of little debris. These little kilometer-sized fragments are what we actually see today as the near-Earth asteroids, these fragments which have worked their way in from the main asteroid belt, approaching the inner solar system, passing near our planet, sometimes impacting our planet. These near-Earth objects, or NEOs, have transformed our near-space environment into a danger zone. The speeds with which objects are running around in the inner solar system is uh, its much akin to actually a bunch of cars driving crazily down a highway. The vehicles themselves are traveling at high speeds. When they cross lanes without looking and perhaps running into each other, they are hitting at equally high speeds. 
and that's kind of like objects moving on their own independent orbits uh, around the sun. Every few hundred years, Earth gets hit with rocks the size of a football field that can destroy entire cities. But every half million years, we get struck with boulders the size of mountains that could ignite global disasters. The Earth's atmosphere, a layer of gases surrounding our planet, incinerates most material. But occasionally, larger, heavier objects slip through. As soon as they enter the Earth's atmosphere, they get slowed down, decelerated by the atmosphere, and uh, they lose pretty much all of the velocity with which they entered. And during that time is when you see the fireball event. But once they lose that velocity that they came in with, they essentially just fall pretty much at terminal velocity onto the Earth's surface. When asteroids hit the Earth's atmosphere, they become meteors, bright fireballs in the sky. If they make it to the ground, they're called meteorites. Over the past century alone, meteorites have struck homes, vehicles, and even people. In 1954, an eight-pound meteorite crashed through the roof of a home in Sylacauga, Alabama, and hit a woman in the hip leaving her with nasty bruises. In October 1992, amateur videos caught a fireball flashing across the skies above several Atlantic states. The 27-pound meteorite eventually crushed the back end of a car in Peekskill, New York. In November 2008, a police dash camera recorded a bright meteorite explosion in the skies over Alberta, Canada. These caught on video impacts prove that things really do fall from the sky. What's even more startling is the physical evidence of much bigger impacts, ones that have caused global catastrophes in the past and may ignite a cosmic Armageddon in the future.